Hi, thanks for uh, sharing your, your lunch time with me. I'm going to tell you about uh, this cool stuff that we're, we're working on um, after I tell you why. So some potential customers have sh shared with us that there are some barriers for them moving their workloads to a cloud instead of on-prem. Uh, and the biggest three factors are regulation, uh, trust uh, in companies, uh, and compromise uh, and what can happen to the, the data that is on other people's machines. Right. I'm not going to talk too much about regulation. Here we go. So that's the other button. Um, but I will t t tell you how uh, we, we aim to, to solve uh, problems with trust and compromise with our open source framework. All right, so by trust, I mean you are running your software on other people's machines, and they can be running arbitrary software to manage those machines, and they can unfortunately sometimes get compromised, not saying uh, that happens at Google. Uh, now, beyond just the companies, there can be individual administrators who have access to these computers so that they can do their jobs, and they can be compromised in one way or the other through phishing, or they're overtly malicious. Now, the compromise component is when you're running on these computers, they can be subject to problems in, like, the Linux kernel. Everybody run, running on Linux is open to these same problems. Uh, there is also being able to break out of the DMA jail from rogue peripherals and to just go grab, uh, go snooping memory. And that's not so great. So when data is accessible on a machine, it is also subject to uh, legal discovery. So we consider that also as part of uh, compromise vectors for uh, confidential data. So enclaves are two things in the abstract. They are isolation for your execution and data, and they are attestation. And I want to tell you a little bit about uh, what that means. So isolation is that the operating system, the BIOS, hardware other than the CPU is all outside of your trust boundary. It is not able to see any of your memory uh, or tamper with your execution at all. In a typical process, the OS has full control over your, your process. The BIOS can be tampered with. The hardware can have access beyond what you want. Right, and when this data is not even available to the kernel and is only available to your enclave, it is not subject to legal discovery. The second component of an enclave is attestation. And attestation aims to uh, answer the question with cryptographic guarantees that the software you're talking to is really the software that you want to be talking to, uh, and that it is running on the hardware that you expect to be giving you these uh, tr trusted execution environment guarantees. When you put these two things together, you're able to make the following uh, statement that you can only that you send secrets only to your software and only your software can read them and that's really important to a lot of potential customers uh, who want to, to move to cloud uh, for a lot of reasons okay so isolation and attestation are nice properties to say that an enclave is in the abstract but unfortunately that is not an industry standard uh, and there are a lot of technologies that market themselves as enclaves or trusted execution environments uh, that don't give uh, all aspects of isolation and attestation that we really want. Right? And because it's too early to know which one of these technologies is really going to win uh, in the marketplace, it's uh, nice to have your enclave applications be written for an abstract notion of an enclave so that you can move uh, around. And that's what Oslo is, right? It is a framework that abstracts over uh, enclave technology and notions of attestation 
so that you can uh, easily migrate between different trusted execution uh, backends. And now a really, really awesome, cool thing that is in Oslo is support for POSIX-based uh, application, uh, POSIX-based programming. Now, when you're in one of uh, these trusted execution environments, you have that the OS is outside of your uh, trusted computing base, which means that you don't get to use it, which means it's really hard to write software in the, the typical way that people usually write software. And now to talk a bit more about how uh, the POSIX system works in Oslo, I want to introduce my colleague, Chong Tsai. Uh, I'm going to briefly talk about the POSIX support that Oslo provides. So as Diona talked about earlier, uh, in, when you're inside an enclave, we, uh, it provides security uh, isolation even from the operating system. So we're having trouble. Uh, for a code running inside Enclave to access the resources that's usually provided by the operating system. So Silo provides a POSIX layer to make user code uh, get access to them. Uh, the way, uh, so it, which includes hardware access like clock, uh, I.O. like read write, and other kinds of syscalls that you uh, normally want to access. We implement them with security features added. So normally, when an application makes a syscall, it access the operating system for the operation. But in Enclave case, code running inside Enclave is isolated from the operating system, so that's not the option. And we provide, Acillo provides a uh, POSIX layer, which is an API level of implementation for the syscalls, so the user code that's running inside an Enclave does not need to know OK, this code is running inside the Enclave. I need to access the Oscillo POSIX API. They can just access exactly the Cisco uh, as usual. And the Oscillo POSIX layer will run that uh, Cisco. And uh, in, in some cases, it, it exits the Enclave and delegates the Cisco to the operating system with security features added. The goal for a Silo POSIX layer is to provide exactly the same behavior as if it's on the host. The user, the, the user code does need, not need to know it's running inside the Enclave. They, sh they can call exactly the same Cisco as they would on the host, and uh, they should exa expect exactly the same behavior. The way we do that is, for example, for non-sensitive operations, uh, it may just exit the Enclave and delegate the call to the host, and there are some other uh, interesting examples that uh, uh, we provide to achieve this goal. For example, signals. When somebody registers a handler inside an enclave, the Oscillo POSIX layer saves that handler inside the enclave. Then it exits the enclave, register a uh, handler on the host. When the signal arrives, the handler on the host is invoked, which invokes an entry point to enter the enclave and invoke the corresponding handler that's registered inside the Enclave. So the user can expect the same behavior. They re register a handler inside an Enclave, and when the signal arrives, their handler should be evoked. Another uh, in interesting example is a fork. A fork is the syscall that uh, Linux uses to create a process that's exactly the same as the parent. However, Enclaves are not clonable for security reason. So in order to support that, we provide duplication and encryption of the Enclave states. So we load a new Enclave, we encrypt the old Enclave data, and restore that in the uh, new Enclave. Uh, the, sec uh, the security features for Fork is not fully implemented yet. Uh, we're working actively to support secure Fork. And uh, uh, even though we are providing security features for the syscalls that we provide, sometimes it's not impossible to make it fully secure. Uh, on our website, Acillo.dev, we have documentations uh, fully detailed of the syscalls that we provide, and uh, if there is any the possible uh, security concern or issues it may have, um, the user code should uh, 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 investigate into that when before they make syscalls. And uh, so what we have support right now for Acillo POSIX layer is we have provide enough POSIX layer support to run a fully featured gRPC. Uh, we can also run a full featured latest open source Redis. Uh, I'll do a quick demo later to show how we can do that. 
Um, and in both cases, we don't need to make any source change to uh, either of them. Uh, we can just uh, pull exactly the same code from the GitHub and run that inside an enclave with just solo. So uh, you're welcome to check, check out our website, uh, acillo.dev, if you're interested for updates and uh, documentations for acillo. And uh, our open source project is at github.com slash google slash uh, You can check it out if uh, you're interested. In. And uh, uh, I'm going to do a quick demo to show how you can run uh, Redis inside an enclave. So what you need to run a user application like Redis inside an enclave is a workspace. So first, uh, you need a workspace file. Uh, sorry, the color is probably a little bit hard to read, but uh, so right here you want to uh, import, uh, it's, somehow it's not showing the whole thing, but you want to import a silo right here. A silo point 3.4 is the latest release that we have. And of course you want to import Redis if that's the user application you want to build. Uh, the latest open source version of Redis 5.0.4. Uh, a provides a build file uh, in a silo code base that builds uh, Redis with uh, Bazel, which is the Google uh, build tool. And uh, other than that, you need a .bazel RC file. This basically tells Bazel uh, what tool chain, what cross tool to use, and uh, what the uh, build configs are. This is exactly the same file copied from uh, a silo GitHub. We don't need to make any changes. Finally, the, own, uh, the last thing you need is a build target to tell Bazel what you want to build. So here uh, we provide an application wrapper which wraps the user main function entrance in the trusted part of the code, the raw method. So the only thing we need is to wrap that in CC Enclave binary, which is our application wrapper, you give it a name, and uh, you put what you want to build as the build target in the uh, dependencies. So here, Redis main is the target that runs the Redis server. So that's everything you need. And now we can just uh, build the build uh, uh, application wrapper. So Bazel build, Bazel is the uh, Google build tool. So we give it a config, which is unksim, tells it to uh, build the targets in a simulated environment. And uh, Acillo Redis is the uh, target that uh, we just had for CC Enclave binary. Here it is. Uh, you can see that it builds very quickly. That's because I have pre-built it, because we don't have enough time to build it right here. OK, so uh, once you have it built, uh, we are ready to run the binary, which is placed in the basal bin, and uh, this is the binary we just built. And we run the binary, we can see that Redis server is running, uh, is up, it's running inside the enclave. Here we have a warning about current maximum open file is 1,024. Uh, that's because this is the current maximum file descriptors uh, we allow with a silo inside an enclave. And uh, so now it's ready to accept connections. So in a different terminal, we run Redis client to connect to the server. We can pin it, and uh, we can set a whatever key and a value. And we can get it just uh, like normally you would uh, uh, use Redis. OK, that's uh, everything I have for the demo. Uh, is there any questions? Thank you, Chong. Thank you.